Good morning and welcome back to Children's Worship. I am Ruth Ann Luckenbaugh, the Children's Ministry Coordinator. And I'm Kara Sealing, the Director of Family Ministry. And we are so happy to welcome you back to online Children's Worship. Um, we are hoping that we will see you later today at our Trunk or Treat event from 2 to 4. Remember, we'll have trunks here so you can come and, and uh, trunk or treat and get some treats from the, um, the people who've set up. We have at least 21 uh, trunks signed up, so we're hoping we'll have even more by the time uh, it all shakes out. Um, and we will have a petting zoo. Um, so you can come and check out the, uh, check out the live animals and we'll have some free food But we're not going to feed the animals. Okay, we're not feeding the animals um, But the um, but the petting zoo will be here so you can get pet the llamas and do all of that kind of stuff Have a hot dog and some chips invite your friends come in costume. It's going to be a great afternoon So um, we are excited about that and we are excited also if you want to come and join us for in-person Sunday school or in-person children's worship um, those happen at 9 o'clock service for in-person wor children's worship and at 1015 for in-person Sunday school. So you're invited to join us for those as well. And um, so let's get started with our worship. Remind you that we have our green uh, on the cloth. It's still green. It's going to be green for a little bit longer um, and because we're still in our growing season. And we also have our candles lit to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And Miss Kara is continuing the story of our friend Moses. All right, so we have been talking about Moses. And uh, if you have been with us for children's worship the last couple of weeks, I'm just going to review it for you. If you haven't, I'm going to catch you up real quick. So we started off with Moses. And Moses was saved. His whole life was saved because his mom uh, hid him in a basket and floated it on the river. And that basket was found by the Pharaoh's daughter. Um, and so Moses from very early on was set apart. He was chosen by God to do something. And we see that as an evident of the, in the ways that he was, um, was saved in just a very unusual way and the people that he was raised by. Um, and then we uh, talked about how uh, Moses, uh, years later, um, was called by God through the burning bush. Um, and so God asked Moses to do something. He asked Moses to go back to Pharaoh and to tell him to set the Israelite people free, um, which is a really big task and one that is uniquely suited for Moses, who knows the Pharaoh and knows the inner workings of, of the Pharaoh's house, right? Um, and then uh, last week we talked about how Pharaoh did not want to let the Israelites go, right? They were free labor for him, and uh, they were serving his purposes well, and he uh, did not want to want to see them go. And so um, we heard how, uh, God talked, told Moses to, to let Pharaoh know, hey, if you don't let these people go, bad things are going to happen. And so last week we talked about the plagues that happened and how finally after, uh, after many plagues, many losses of, of things, um, Pharaoh had had enough and said, okay, fine, get out, go, go now. And uh, Moses and the Israelite people were ready. They were ready to go. They were ready to leave. They had um, their stuff packed. They had taken their bread out early, so it wasn't even, it hadn't risen yet. They had, uh, they were ready to go on this journey. And so um, that's where we find Moses and the people this week. They are headed out of Egypt. They are being led um, by God, um, by clouds during the day and by fire at night. So they're being led very specifically by, by God out of Egypt. And so uh, we're going to see where that story takes us, um, takes Moses and the, the Hebrew people. The Red Sea. It was a long journey leaving Egypt. The Israelites camped on the shore of the Red Sea. The people were feeling really nervous. Moses squinted into the darkening sky. Had he heard something? Something in the distance? Moses shook his head slowly. He did not trust Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to keep his promise. Do you think Pharaoh followed us? Aaron asked. Moses listened. Moses stood listening. 
We will see, Moses said. We will see. Moses didn't have long to wait. Soon a growing cloud of dust rose up in the distance. A rumble of horse hooves thundered toward the travelers. They could see them clearly now. Hundreds of Pharaoh's chariots charged toward them. Hundreds of soldiers followed with orders to bring the people back. We're trapped, someone yelled. A strong wind began to blow. Cries went up from the people. Moses, they shouted. Have you brought us here to die? Don't be afraid, Moses told his people. Stand firm. God is with us. Moses gripped the staff in his hand. Prepare to move out, he shouted into the wind. Where, Moses, Aaron said, there is no place to go. Through the Red Sea, Moses said, God will make a way. Moses stood on the edge of the shore. He raised his right arm. He stretched his staff out over the white waves. The waters trembled and divided. The wild wind roared. Soon a wall of water stood on the left and the right. Dry land appeared between the walls, a safe path to the other side. Move now, Moses ordered. How strange it must have felt to step on to the sandy path. How scary to feel the spray from the water waiting on the other side. Would God save them? Would God keep his promise to Moses? In the morning, Pharaoh's army stood on the Red Sea shore. They saw the Israelites safe on the other side. Soon chariots groaned and soldiers cracked their whips. Pharaoh's army moved slowly across the rocky and sandy path. They will catch us, a young woman yelled. Watch and wait, said Moses. Moses once again held his staff up over the waves. Tons of water came tumbling down. Horses, chariots, and riders were all swept into the sea. All right, so in this story that we just read, um, Moses and the people have left Egypt and they are at the Red Sea and they're stuck, right? Probably they initially thought, we can walk along the Red Sea, but when Pharaoh's army started coming directly at them, they felt trapped. It was either they stay and fight or maybe swim. I don't know what they were thinking. Or maybe try to run, try to figure out which way to go. Um, but Moses was pretty confident that God was going to get them through. And he um, shared that confidence with the people. And he raised his rod and he stuck it down. And the waters parted. And in a very seemingly impossible situation, God made very possible a path for Moses and the people. Uh, we talked about um, in worship last week um, about how God makes things possible when it's seemingly impossible. And this is one of those moments. And one of our big words that we're talking about throughout uh, this, this learning about Moses is awe. And I feel like this is one of those big moments of awe because can you imagine what it would feel like to step where water just was, but it, it's dried up, and where you were walking between walls of water, but there's no glass or anything holding them up. There's just, just the water there. I think that that would be a very awe-filled moment, and maybe a, a scary moment too, right? Because you don't know how long that water is going to stay up, and certainly if it starts to um, splash down on you, that would be a problem. Um, but Moses was confident and God was faithful and saw his people through the Red Sea to the other side. And this is one of those big moments I think that, um, that we think of when we think of Moses. We think of Moses in the basket, we think of Moses seeing the burning bush, and we think of Moses being very confident in a moment of seemingly impossibility and saying, you know, these waters will part. And they did. Um, and the people were able to escape um, from Pharaoh's army again, right? Because they had already left Egypt and they had been told they could leave and they would be able to, to move forward and, and move on to the promised land wherever that was. And, uh, and they believed that, but they also didn't really trust Pharaoh. Um, and, uh, and Pharaoh changed his mind. And so they had to escape again from the Egyptian people. And this was a way that God provided for um, the Israelite people, um, for Moses, uh, to 
one, be able to escape, but also, two, to be reminded of how powerful and faithful God is. Um, so we're going to pick up that story then next week with what happens on the other side of the Red Sea. And I am going to uh, share with you guys what our activities are this week. Um, we have this activity, which is just a word search, uh, Red Sea Crossing. So it's got some words in here um, that relate to the story. Um, one in here, this big one, unleavened bread. It's because they had to take their bread so quickly and go with it. It didn't have time to rise. Um, and so all these words in here relate to the story. Um, and then I always like to have a coloring page and I thought that this one was a particularly fun interpretation of the parting of the Red Sea. Um, because you see the walls of water, um, you see Moses, um, if, I'm not sure if you can see his face on here, but when if you print these out from your uh, weekly email, you'll be able to see very clearly. Um, he looks like he knows what's going on, but all these people look very unsure, and the sheep um, also look like they're kind of eyeing the water, like, uh, is this okay, is this safe? Um, and then uh, I also like that there's this little crab there that's just like, hey, what, what happened to my water? Um, so I thought this was a fun coloring page. Uh, you can print all those from your children's weekly email. Um, and we hope to see you guys this afternoon uh, for our fall festival and trunk or treat. Um, Miss Ruth Ann told you all about that at the beginning. And so uh, we hope to see you in person. You can wear your costume, uh, come ready to meet some animals um, and do some, some trick or treating with our trunk or treat. Let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you so much for the many ways that you provide for us, for reminding us that you are faithful and powerful. Uh, thank you for the Hebrew people who trusted you um, and for Moses who was willing to lead them uh, out of Egypt. In your name we pray. Amen.